Having trouble understanding Metal Gear Solid V's FOB system? Don't worry, so is everyone else. I've been doing a little research, but I didn't really find a guide that answered my questions. While I'm no expert, I found quite a bit of information with my short time researching FOBs. So here's an organized guide to what I know so far about Metal Gear Solid V's FOB system. The first thing to note about the FOB system is that it's first unlocked after Mission 22. I won't spoil anything, but after that mission you can and pretty much have to construct an FOB. I'd recommend doing the story first and leaving the FOB for endgame. Okay. Now I'll give a brief overview of how the FOB system works. The FOB system is a sort of PvP online base management component for MGS5. You build the FOB just like you would Mother Base, and other players can invade to try to steal your staff, weapon emplacements, and resources. When you have an FOB, you can have more staff and it will raise your individual team levels, examples being R&D, support, or intel. This can help you advance in single player, or you can just do it for fun. Now, when someone invades your base, if you're playing, you can go to your FOB and defend it. People can also invade your base when you aren't playing the game, so it's important to have a good AI defense. Because it's obvious the first time playing FOB missions, I'll just go ahead and say it. Defending is way easier than attacking slash infiltrating. When defending, you have the defenses you set up, you can track down the attacker easily and make as much noise as you want, and you have infinite lives, while the attacker only has one life. Unless you're infiltrating a base that sucks and is defended by an incompetent player, then you're probably in for a hard time. I'm not trying to discourage anyone, I'm just telling you how it is. Maybe, hopefully, it's going to change. To start, you can click on Base Development in the Mother Base tab on your iDroid. Next, navigate over to your FOB. From here, you can construct new platforms and decks for each FOB. Though, I highly recommend only having the one FOB, uh, I don't think the FOB system is amazing, nor do I think it's justified in taking your hard-earned money. The next important step is to do the side ops missions to get all the security device blueprints. Getting these will allow you to develop and use certain security measures in your FOB. There are cameras, IR sensors, UAV drones, and anti-theft devices. They all have their uses, and it would be foolish not to get them and have them as options. Anyway, now that you know how to build and upgrade the FOB, we can continue on to managing it. So by default, you start off with a command platform with only the first deck. You can upgrade it by giving it more decks, and here's why that's important. When someone invades, they invade from the highest number deck on the platform. So if you've upgraded to three decks on the command platform, and that's the platform they choose to invade, their landing zone will have to be on the third deck. They will then have to travel all the way to the top center of your first deck to infiltrate and win. Alright, so you have a base, and maybe you even added some extra platforms and decks. Now it's time to make sure they're properly defended. Go ahead and click on Security Settings in the Mother Base tab of your iDroid. This is where the magic happens when it comes to planning out your FOB's defenses. Start by clicking on the platform you want to manage, then go ahead and click Basic Settings. This allows you to change the preparedness level of your platform, which affects your guard's awareness. The security cost you see in the top right will be the cost charged to you each time that platform is invaded. It's good practice for the first deck to have the highest preparedness. Now that we've set the basic settings, we'll get more advanced. Go ahead and click back to the previous menu and click Advanced Settings. Start by selecting All Decks and choose whether you want the guards to have lethal or non-lethal gear. You can also set the guard level settings, equipment grade, and range type. This is where it gets a little confusing, so bear with me as I try to take my time and explain. When deciding between lethal and non-lethal, the main thing to consider is what you have developed. If you go into Development on the Mother Base tab of your iDroid, you can see what you can develop and what you have developed. The items with green text are items that can be equipped by your staff. So if you've leveled up a green item such as the AM MRS 4R Assault Rifle, then you can use that item to the highest level that you've developed it. So if you've developed a lethal assault rifle to level 4 and a non-lethal to level 3, you're probably best off going with lethal. Also, keep in mind this will change your guard's armor too. If you have lethal and you've developed the battle dress, your guards will use that. If you have non-lethal and you've developed the sneaking suit, your guards will use that instead. The battle dress is more damage resistant and has more padding against damage and trank rounds, while the sneaking suit prevents the enemy from seeing your guard's body heat with night vision goggles. This will also affect the type of mines placed if you have directional mines or sleep gas mines developed. With all that in mind, let's now discuss equipment grade. 
the equipment grade only goes up until the highest developed item in the lethal slash non-lethal category. If you've developed the battle dress to level 5, then it will be better and feature a helmet for each guard. Same goes for the sneaking suit, which features a smaller helmet, but also a gas mask. This is a huge deal when it comes to defense. If you have low equipment grade, then your guards will be extremely vulnerable to track rounds. With no helmet on guards, I guarantee I can sneak into your base with just a track pistol and sleep grenades. Believe me when I say, the equipment grade along with your soldiers' ranks and preparedness level make the biggest difference. To give an example with what was said before about lethal and non-lethal gear and the green text development items, if you've developed a green text sniper such as the AM MR-71 rifle, and you select long range, this is likely the weapon to be used. Whatever the best developed weapon in that category is will be the weapon used. Same goes for mid-range assault rifles and close-range shotguns and SMGs. To tie together range type and equipment grade, your highest level armor must match your highest level range weapon to use that setting. To clarify, if you want to have lethal and you've developed a level 5 battle dress, but only have a level 4 assault rifle using the mid-range type, then the highest equipment grade you can choose is level 4. Meanwhile, if you have a level 5 sniper and switch to long range type, your highest equipment grade can be 5. The force distribution settings from this category aren't very important if you have more than one deck. I'd recommend backing out to the previous menu and setting these up by each deck. Once you're at the deck you want to customize, go ahead and use the settings you think you'll need. I recommend all 12 guards for the first deck, full IR sensors if you only have one deck, no anti-theft devices, full cameras, a couple of decoys, and full mines. As the decks get further from the center, lower the guards to save some GMP, but increase anti-theft devices, IR sensors, cameras, and UAVs. On your highest number platform, which they will have to start invading, I'd use the max number of IR sensors, cameras, and UAVs. Try to make it help them to leave that platform undetected. Okay, you should have a great baseline of defense. You can keep upgrading your equipment, and you could even stop here if you wanted to be relatively safe from an attacker. But some of you will want to get even more in depth with it, and I respect that. So here's how you can really specialize your defenses. This is an important step to creating a solid line of security. If you can't even sneak into your own base with just the AI defending and your security devices, what chances does the enemy have? Training is a great way to probe your own defenses for weakness. Think of it as penetration testing. Search for the weakness and do your best to fix it. You can also visit your base so you can walk around without having to fight your own guards. This is useful for seeing where your security devices actually are, deciding if they're worth the GMP where they are, and also to see where your resource containers are. If they're all on the second deck, why waste GMP on anti-theft devices for the first deck? Not only can you customize the security devices, you can customize guard patrols and where they focus on defending, too. The key security zones feature allows you to have guards cover certain areas to prevent the enemy from just invading, walking up the stairs, and heading for the center of your first deck. Try and spread the zones out and don't overdo it, because this takes away guards from the center of the deck. The verticality of the first deck can be a powerful ally. The more guards there, the more difficult it will be for the enemy to just climb up and win undetected. That being said, you also don't want it to be too easy for them to get to the center stairs either. Maintaining a good balance of three security zones spread out near each area they can come up from is the best method I've found. So. If you've been invaded, then you must have received the option to retaliate against their base and to view the defense log of what occurred. Always, always view the defense logs. It's another layer of probing, and it will be like another set of eyes on a way through your defenses you may not have seen. You can see where they landed and their path up to the deck, as well as where they took out guards and where they were on alert or combat statuses. With this information, you can replan your security zones for the best defense. Speaking of friends, you can go on your iDroid and select Relationships on the Missions tab. This shows you what players you're supporting, who's supporting you, and it also has another tab to support a random player. This allows you to personally defend their base if they aren't on. Remember how I said defense is an easier win? Well, so long as their base isn't useless, you should have a couple easy victories on your hands if you get to defend someone else's base who isn't on. It's a great way to quickly earn GMP and heroism. So if you don't mind the notices of emergency invasions of other players' FOBs, go ahead and support a bunch of random people. And who knows, they might just support you back. Not sure if this is a spoiler or not, but I'll mark it as a minor one anyway. So once you beat the game, you can develop up to four nukes for each of your FOBs. Each one costs 750,000 GMP, 75,000 fuel resources, and 50,000 minor metal resources. 
When you build a nuke, your demon points increase. I didn't even know that was a thing in the game, but uh, apparently increases the size of your horn. Uh, but now for a pretty insane pro and con. The con being, when you have a nuke, you can bomb anyone else that has a nuke's base, essentially destroying all of their FOB progress, but the same could happen to you. The pro is, you can invade someone's base, and if they don't have a nuke, they won't be able to retaliate against you. My advice would be, just forget the nuke. So, that pretty much sums up all the information that I've gathered about the FOB system in MGS5 so far. If I discover more or receive recommendations, I'll make another, hopefully shorter video with new information. I may put together a shorter guide too for those who want the single player benefits but don't feel like watching a longer, boringly in-depth video or getting too serious with their defenses. If anyone has any questions or suggestions for another video, uh, go ahead and comment and I'll do my best to respond, just like I did with my older Gmod video. Uh, also, please share the video to help everyone have a fair chance with their FOB, and thanks for watching.